Hi, I'm Damien, and this is the first video in a series of videos in which I will be teaching you how to write computer programs without any prior knowledge. So, if you're interested, keep watching. Now, before we start, I would like to say that all of the videos that I will be posting on this channel as tutorials will be posted without any editing. I will be doing this because I would like you to see the entire process from start to finish of writing a computer code. From actually thinking of what you want the program to do, to then figure out, figuring out what the logic behind the program is, and then to implementing that logic in computer in a programming language and writing code for that program. For, so you can see in this way, from start to finish, the entire process, and everything will be as a session of tutoring from me to you. So if you're interested, let's get started. Before we write computer code, before we create a computer program, we must first understand what a computer program is. A computer program is a collection of instructions that can be executed by a computer to perform a specific task, according to Wikipedia. Now, this definition might seem simple when you first look at it, but if you dive deeper, you can see that it's a bit more difficult. So, f for instance, you can question, you can ask yourself, what is, uh, how does a computer work? Sorry. How does a computer work? Well, a computer works by using machine code. But now, what is machine code? Well, again, according to Wikipedia, machine code is a low-level programming language used to directly control a computer central processing unit, the CPU. The CPU, no matter the computer, is the brains of that computer. Any program that you create will be run by the CPU, no matter what programming language you use. Now, when I'm saying programming language, I'm talking about all of them. And all of the programming languages are split into two big categories. The first category is the compiled programming, uh, the compiled category, the programming languages that are compiled, and then the other are the interpreted programming languages. Let's see what the difference between these two categories is. According to this website, a compiled language is a programming language which is generally compiled and not interpreted. Now, if you ask me, this definition is a bit vague, so let me clear that up for you. Let's take C++, for example, as a compiled programming language. When you have a program written in C++ and you want to run that program, you need a compiler to compile that program. By compiling that program, you translate, it, you translate the C++ code into the machine code that we talked about earlier. So basically, it's a translation stage. We can call it like that right now. So what do you get after you compile the code? Well, you get a program, you get a file that is called an executable file that can be then run on a CPU, on a computer. That's why, by the way, that's why some files have an extension called .exe. That .exe, is, uh, that .exe comes from executable. So you get the machine code, you get the executable file. That's with compiled languages. So the translation, uh, the translation takes place w during the compilation. But what about the interpreted languages? Well, when you have a, a computer program written in an interpreted programming language, you don't translate that program prior to running the program. You do the translation in real time as you run the program. So if you go through the code, you do the translation in real time. So from let's say Python to machine code, you do the, 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 the translation in real time. And that's the biggest difference. One advantage that the compiled languages have over interpreted languages is that the translation takes place uh, before you run the program. So if you compile the program and it takes a long time, beca because it can take a long time, uh, you do the waiting before you run the program and then the program will run faster because it is run straight into machine code. When you have an interpreted programming language, when you have a program written in Python for instance, you don't wait for the program to first be translated into machine code and then to be run as machine code. No, you do that, you, because you do the translation in real time it takes a bit longer and therefore is a bit slower. So that's about the biggest difference between the two. Let's get started. First, in this video, we will be using Python because it is one of the easiest programming languages that you can start with. So, to set up Python, you can go. You, you can first go to python.org, which it would, which will look a bit like this. Then you go to downloads and download the latest version of Python. After you 
install the uh, after you install Python and you are done with all of it, you can then run Python from the command command line. If you are on Mac OS or Linux, it will all work just as well as it does on Windows. But let's see how you run Python in the command line. So we can go into command prompt. If if you're on Linux or on Mac OS, then it will be on the in the terminal. We go into the command line and we type Python, and there we go. We are in Python. If you want to display some text, you can do this quite simply, and we will be talking about this in a in a short while. Now this will let you run uh, run Python code straight into the command line, but nobody actually does it unless you want to I don't know test something really quick. That's that that's the best reason I can think of when th uh, when thinking about how you could use Python in the command line. So yeah. Now, besides Python, you also need something that you can uh, use to write the code and to edit your code. My my favorite uh, software is Visual Studio Code, which we, you can download for free on Windows, Mac OS or Linux from Google. Just Google it and you can find it and install it. Now, let's get started. Let's get started with actually writing code. So, the first program that you always, always write, no matter the programming language that you uh, start learning is the hello world program. The hello world program is really simple. All you have to do is to display the text hello world in the command line. You can do this in Python by using the instruction print. Whatever you pass as an argument to print, it will print it in the command line. In this case, the argument that we are passing is the string hello world. A string is a collection of characters. So for instance, H is a character, E is another character, and so on. And the whole thing is a string. To, to mark something as a string, we use double quotes. Okay, so this string is a parameter that we pass to print, and we can print hello world pretty easily. Let me bring out the console. This is a console of Visual Studio Code. You can also use the command prompt uh, without any problems, uh, so if you want, you can do we, you can do anything you want in a separate command line. I would like to do it right here, just so you can uh, get a better look with the code side by side. So, l how do we run a computer program uh, written in Python, of course? Well, we use the Python command, and then we just enter the name of the program. In my case, I named it main.py. So, if you want to write a computer program, you first need to make a uh, file that is called something.py. .py. After that, you, you write the code inside of that file and then you, you've got the computer program. If, if we run the main.py program, we get, as we expected, hello world. And that's fine. That's exactly what we wanted. But well, let's get a bit further. Besides hello world, uh, there are a lot more things that, are, that need to be learned. For instance, variables. Variables are a concept. Are um, we can call them things. Let's say that. Let's say for now. Let's say that they are things. They are things that store data, and a variable is exactly what its name says. It's something, which who, it's something whose value can vary. It's variable. It's variable. <laughs> so yeah, let's say we want a variable that is called x to have the value of seven. And now that I'm thinking of it, let me make the code a bit bigger. So, we could call a variable in any way that we want. We could call it x, we can call it caret, it doesn't really matter. But just for the sake of it, I will be calling it x just because it's shorter. Now, we have the, va the variable x, but we want to assign to it the value of 7. How do we do that? By using the assignment operator equals. Only one equal sign. That's the assignment operator. We will be talking about a few more other operators in a short while. So, by writing this line of code, we created the variable x and we assigned it the value of 7. And we can check that everything works by printing its value. So, just as we did with this string right here, we can do the same with x. And if we check it by running the program again, we will get hello world that we print on the first line and then x right here. Hello world and 7. That's exactly as expected. Now, let's get a second variable called 
y and let's assign to it the value of 6. If we also print y, it, we will get exactly as we expect. We will get hello world, then 7, then 6. Now, why do we get it in this order? Basically because the program, when you run a program, the, all of the instructions are being run from top to bottom. So they will be taken in order. First, we, we will process the first instruction, which is print. So the, pr the computer will then print in console the string hello world. Then the program will, will create the value, the variable x and assign to it the value of 7. Then it will create the variable y and assign it the, var the value of 6 and then print them both in order. So that's why we got hello world, then 7, then 6. Now, let's get a bit more complicated. We can also do some basic math. x plus y. x plus y. 6 plus 7 is 13. If we run the program again, we will get exactly what we expected. We can, by using the operator plus, we can do multiplication. It's just as easy. We will get 6 times 7, 42. That's it. Is that, it's th that easy. Now, here's a really cool thing that Python can do and some other programming languages cannot do. Python can hold multiple data types in the same uh, variable. Sure, not at the same time, but it can change from one type of variable to another type of variable. For instance, 7 is a number, an integer number, while hello world is a string. So what what would happen if we want to store the value of the string hello world in x? Would Will this work? Let's see. It works perfectly, and it will always work perfectly, because First, we assigned it the value of 7, we printed it, we used it to multiply it by with y and then get 42, and then we assigned a different value to x and printed it again. So when you follow the order from top to bottom, everything is logical and everything is just fine. So we can hold multiple data types in variables, not at the same time, sure, but we can do that. Now. Not only can we hold integer numbers and strings, we can also hold um, floating point numbers. Floating point numbers look something like this, like 4.2. We can also have some something like 7.1. It doesn't really matter. Let's say 4.2. If we print x again, as expected, we get hello world for that was printed first, 7, 6, 42, hello world again, and then 4.2. Just as expected. Now, let's clear this a bit. And here, let's let's move on to something that that will be linked to the last part of the variables topic. One really really important instruction that you use in the, a lot of the programs that you can write is the instruction if. If is a conditional instruction that ca that does something when something happens. So the syntax of if is basically the if instruction followed by a by an equation by a logical operation that can be either evaluated to being true or false so we can check if x is greater than y because we have 7 as the value of x and 6 as the value of y x will be greater than y and therefore uh, this whole operation this whole equation will be evaluated to true being true. And we can check this by doing something really simple. We can do this. x is greater than y. So if x is greater than y, then we will print the string x is greater than y. Let's, let's do just that. As expected, of course, x is actually greater than y. Nothing, nothing surprising there. But what if it wasn't the case? What if we had 8 as the value of y? And we kept this, these two lines. What then? Well, we can do an else statement. So, if x is greater than y, we will print this. Otherwise, else, we can do, we can print x is not greater than y. And if we run this again, 
we will get x is not greater than y because the value of this uh, operation was evaluated to being false because obviously x is not greater than y and that uh, and this brings me to the boolean operators the boolean variables so if we we can actually print x greater than y this equation we can actually print it what do we get from it we'll see we get false we get the value that we get after evaluating the equation so x greater than y is evaluated to false because x is not greater than y and therefore we print false if we had again 6 and printed and ran the program again we will get true this is called a boolean a boolean op um, value true or false there uh, the boolean values can be only true or false that's it and of course because it's python we can write x equals to x greater than y we can do that and then if we print x and run the program we will get true so that's about it with the if value uh, the if statement the if instruction and the else but what if there are two conditions that we you want to check before going on the else path we we can use the elif so we can check first if x is greater than y then if x is equal to y we will print x I is equal to y else we will print y is greater than x let's do it like this and delete this yeah and that's about it so we have 7 and 6 and of course we will be going on this branch and because it's an if else statement these instructions will never be run because we only can we um, because this op operation was evaluated to being true so we will be running only the instructions here these will be completely ignored and everything else will uh, and we will pass on to the following instructions so if we say print high b and run the program we will then see high everything else will be ignored all right everything that we have here will be ignored so i hope that's clear clear that's the if the if instruction let's go for something else what if we want to write the first 10 numbers from 1 through 10 well we, you could actually go ahead and write 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on you, you could that do that, Not, nobody would ever stop you but it's a waste of time what we can do is use a loop a loop is an instruction that loops around and that runs multiple times as many times as you want it to run then there are three types of loops right now we will only be talking about two of them first of all we will get the for loop usually you write this something like this now let's look at what this does so we have for the for loop it says you can you can read this instruction like this for every number i in the range so in the interval from 1 to 10 you print the value of i and let's do that so we have hello world that we have right here we have x is greater than y that we get right here and then we have the numbers 1 2 3 all the way through 9 now why do we have that because the range range is a function that returns an interval so it will always return the interval from the first number this is the starting point up to the second number exclusively so it will never go all the way to 10 if we want to include 10 we need to go all the way up to 11 so if we run it again we always we will also get 10 so that's the for loop we can do some other things we can let's say we don't want to print all of the numbers let's say we only want to print the uh, the odd ones we can take a two st a step of two numbers every single loop and we can do this so first we will start with 1 
then we will add 2 to that 1 and we will get 3 and so on until we get to 11 but because we don't include 11 we only go up to 9 that's a for loop but this is not that efficient because you, you don't always have something that's predetermined we don't always have this we don't have an interval that we know what it is beforehand it can change depending on the actions of the user that actually runs the program so let's do something with a variable let's say we have the variable n that we will be getting from the keyboard so when we will run this program we will have to input a number that will be assigned to n and then we will go from 1 to n with no step so all the, all the numbers from 1 to n we will display all of them let's go ahead and see and now as you can see nothing happens because python is currently waiting for us to enter a number so let's enter something like 7 now here's an error and this is something that i wanted to happen because i wanted to show you the, uh, what happens when you input something into a program the input function is a function that takes anything that you write from the keyboard with your keyboard into the console but whatever you input is taken as a string always as a string so even if we wrote uh, the number 7 it will always be interpreted as the character 7 because it is a string and characters are different from numbers so to solve this we need to convert it to integer Convert it to integer, we can always use this function, but you don't need to pay attention to it. We'll talk about it later. If we do this again and type 7, we will get the expected result. We typed in 7, which was interpreted as a string, then it was converted from a, a character to an actual number, the number 7, and then we got 7 as the number, the value of n, and then we printed all of the numbers from 1 all the way up to n minus 1 inclusively so it's it will it was from 1 to 6 that was to be expected now as a closing part for the closing part let's do another really really well known program it's called the fizzbuzz program whenever you, by the way whenever you want to write a comment in a program in a python program you can reuse the pound sign that or uh, some people call it the hashtag and let's say fizz buzz this is a fizz buzz program what does it do you go from 1 to n take the numbers from 1 to n and print them if a number is can be evenly divided by 3 print fizz if it can be evenly divided by 5 print buzz that's the program that's what we wanted to do so what do we need first first we need n the number the number that we want to get from the keyboard so we get n n will be again we will be taking it from the keyboard and then we want to go from 1 to n so it will be for i in range 1 to n plus 1 we want to include n also in our program what what next well we got we retrieved the value of n from the keyboard we did it right here and we will take all of the numbers from 1 to n this is what the for does and we need to check each one of them to see if the numbers can be evenly divided by 3 we need to print fizz if we can, and if it can be evenly divided by 5 we need to print buzz now there's a little bit of a catch if it is if it can be evenly divided by 3 and 5 print fizz buzz this is something that should happen all of the all the time with uh, so if you get for instance 15 we you need to print fizz buzz uh, because 15 is both it can be divided by 3 and by 5 so what do we do next what can we do 
there are a bit uh, there are multiple approaches to this problem you can do it multiple ways um, and let's say let's go let, let's just go into it so you we will be checking if I can be evenly divided divided by 3 for each loop so if I can be divided by 3 I will be explaining this in a little bit, don't worry. We, we can print this. If it can be divided by uh, 5, we print buzz. Um, okay. And if it cannot be divided by 3 and by 5, we just print it. Now, if we run this and we print and we input something like 6, we will get 1, 2, fizz, 3, which we don't want, 4, buzz, which is for 5, and then fizz again for 6. And this seems kind of wrong, and it is wrong. So, how can we fix it? Now, this, the process of fixing a program that doesn't work as you want it to work is called debugging because we wanted the program to work in a certain way and it didn't run the way we wanted to is that's what happens when you have a bug in your code that's what we call it so let's see what we can do about it first of all we need to check if the number i is can be divided evenly by 3 how do we do this well to divide a number, to see if a number can be evenly divided by another number, we use the percentage operator. The percentage operator will give us the remainder after dividing the number to the second one, the first number to the second one. So if we divide i by 3, the remainder will be retrieved by using the percentage operator. So if the remainder is 0, then it means that i can be divided evenly with by 3. So yeah, that's the logic behind it. That's why we say that this, that by using this, we check if the i can be evenly divided by 3. That's how we do it. Now, we first need to, uh, need to check if i can be divided by 3. And, that's the syntax in Python, and if i can be divided by uh, by 5 so if it can be divided by both of them we can print fizzbuzz otherwise this is where the elif comes in if it is only divide can be divided by 3 we print fizz otherwise we print buzz and as the last part we print i if it cannot be divided by 3 and 5 or just by 3 or just by 5 we print the number let's see if this works let's input 10 so we get 1 2 instead of getting 3 we get fizz 4 5 instead of getting 5 we get buzz instead of getting 6 we get fizz instead of getting we get 7 8 and instead of getting 9 we get fizz and instead of getting 10 we get buzz as expected but let's see if we get fizzbuzz let's, let's run it again and let's say 16 so this is where 15 should have been and we get fizzbuzz uh, so right now in this configuration this is how the program should work and it works cor correctly so that's about it that's all I had to say in this tutorial I really do hope I didn't go too into detail and I hope that it was easy enough for everybody to understand and we I'll see you in the next video okay Bye.